Coming up on Fulton Today, police reveal how new state-of-the-art technology will enhance transparency and the public's trust. And Fulton deputies head back to campus to keep Georgia Tech students safe. That and more starts right now on Fulton Today. Welcome to Fulton Today, everybody. I'm Shawnee Chavis Rucker. By unanimous vote, the Fulton County Commissioners approve funding for body and in-car cameras for the police department. FGTV's Priscilla Ortega has a story now on how this one move will improve transparency and the public's trust. Currently, the Fulton County Police Department does not have dash cameras or body cameras, but after the Board of Commissioners approved more than $400,000 in funding, the department will soon have 170 cameras. Radio 261, one more radio check. While officers are equipped with radios, blue lights, and guns, by the end of the year, officers will also have body cameras and patrol units will be equipped with dash cameras. Well, I believe they'll be very beneficial on a couple of different fronts. Police Chief Gary Stiles says his department will join a number of others in the country who are using body cameras like the Spokane, Washington Police, Police Department. They are being audio and visually recorded. The mission you know is to better investigate crimes March. and to better provide transparency to the public. It enables us to quickly investigate any complaints on an officer, and I believe that it will, in most cases, uh, exonerate the conduct of our officers. They can even be set to automatically turn on in certain situations. I'd be able to set it to where the camera comes on whenever the officer leaves their car. Then our policy will make it incumbent on the officer to know when the law says turn the camera off. Fulton County 911, what is the address of your emergency? The body cameras will also improve officer safety by alerting 911 if the officer is in distress. This isn't the first department in Fulton using body cameras. Deputies with the Fulton County Sheriff's Office already use similar cameras at the jail. Now, as far as the dash cameras, Chief Stiles says those can be set to automatically turn on when the blue lights are activated. There will also be cameras that can record the back seat. Now, these are all expected to be up and running by the end of the year. Reporting from downtown Atlanta, I'm Priscilla Ortega for FGTV. Fulton County Sheriff's deputies head back to campus to give an important lesson on safety. FGTV's Felicia Church has the story. Whether you're living on your own for the first time or you're dreading that dreaded freshman 15, college is supposed to be a fun and memorable part of life. The last thing you want to worry about is your safety when walking to class or meeting up with friends. I think this is a great um, function. It's a great idea. That great idea is the 8th Annual Campus Safety Day, hosted by the Georgia Tech Police Department. It helps students understand their safety is top priority on and off campus. The objective of Campus Safety Day is to show the students all the resources they have available to them for safety. Not only campus services, GTPD, health services, um, cybersecurity, and even the counseling center, but also the agencies around us, including Fulton County Sheriff's Office, Atlanta Police Department, MARTA Police Department, uh, GSPs out here as well, and even AFR. For the first time, the Fulton County Sheriff's Office was asked to participate. It's important because the citizens are important to us, and we want the citizens to know that we are out there to um, work for their safety and also to let them know the resources that we have and that we utilize to keep them safe. Campus Safety Day isn't all talk. From a DUI simulator to sitting in patrol cars and making the sirens blare, it gave students the opportunity to interact with the equipment used to protect them. Well, what we brought with us today from the Sheriff's Office, we have our um, K-9 units, which are, are behind me. We have two K-9 units that came with us, as well as our community relations um, unit. While the students we spoke to feel safe walking around the Tech campus, they like knowing multiple agencies have their backs. It's a really, really good opportunity to stay safe, and we just, I mean, we walk in packs and really hang out together and make sure we're aware of our surroundings. So. Yeah, I do feel like this is a lot safer because it is a campus, and they do have policemen patrolling constantly, so I do feel like it's a really, really safe campus. I feel really safe here. 
Other partnering agencies included the Atlanta Police Department and Fire Department, MARTA Police, Georgia State Patrol, the Midtown Alliance, and Georgia Emergency Management Agency. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Felicia Church. Fulton officials engage in a little adult show and tell. I'm going to take the opportunity to talk about um, Teach Blocks from an education standpoint. With just over a month to go until the November election, county and election leaders came together to show the work they've done to educate voters on the transportation special local option sales tax, also known as Teach Blocks. Whether it's talking points or PowerPoint slides, the goal is to communicate a complex issue in the simplest manner before voters head to the polls on November 8th. We just want to make sure that residents um, are aware of what this um, referendum would do if, it, if adopted. Um, it would bring approximately $570 million of transportation investments to Fulton County. So when voters go to the polls, we just want them to make a well-informed decision um, and we just want them to have the best information available. It's very refreshing, very validating. I think collaboration is the key. Um, there's so much that we can learn from other jurisdictions. Um, and just the sharing and um, exchange of information and ideas in terms of a strategy for communication and marketing um, and awareness, the education piece um, is very, very important. And so it's very helpful to us as a, as a municipality. If you'd like more information about the transportation special local option sales tax, log on to FultonCountyGA.gov slash Young people want to create a better quality of life for their peers and at the same time prepare them for success. We're excited to tackle the many initiatives that we're working on. At a recent meeting held by the Fulton County Youth Commission, the topics of preventing drug use and raising the dropout age were the main focus. With high school dropouts earning $15,000 less than a graduate and more likely to commit serious crimes, they feel pushing the state's dropout age to 18 instead of 16 or 17 would produce tremendous benefits. They also continue to push their drug prevention initiative, not even once, which helps students learn the consequences of possession, trafficking, and other drug and alcohol offenses. Uh, many of our young people are abusing drugs at alarming rates, um, and you know we want our young people to be the advocates on drug prevention within the schools. And to ensure all students are receiving a first-class educational experience, the Youth Commissioners will conduct school assessments, which will be presented to the Fulton County Board of Commissioners at a later date. In other youth news, the Sheriff's Office will soon be providing more hype to youngsters. The 7th Annual Helping Our Youth Prosper and Evolve, or HYPE short, takes place Saturday, October 8th at the Atlanta Metropolitan State College from 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. This program is so important because these are classes that the, the, that the, that the kids, the students, are not going to get in school. You're not going to get classes like this in middle school or high school. This yearly youth conference encourages 6th through 12th graders to become more productive students by providing age-appropriate information to help them better make decisions as they make their way through those awkward teen years. Now, along with parenting sessions, three exciting workshops on gangs, judicial and law enforcement, and youth interaction will be offered. We'll have the, the uh, interactive classes in the morning. The three classes will be in the morning. They'll each last um, about an hour, hour and 10 minutes each. Complimentary breakfast and lunch will also be served and some great prizes will be given away. At the end of the day, in the auditorium and the gymnasium, there we will be giving away Beats by Dre headphones and Android tablets. We have a number of those to give away, so in the morning when they register, they'll be given a ticket, a prize ticket, and we'll be calling those numbers uh, near the end of the day. For information, including how to register, call 404-612-6624 or log on to FultonSheriff.net. And still to come, in the show, the HIV and AIDS Task Force proposes changes the county can make to reduce the stigma associated with the virus. But first, using tobacco products in county parks may go up in smoke. Thanks to a passionate commissioner, details are next in our district by district coverage.
Fulton's chairman talks leadership with some Sandy Springs residents and the move to make Fulton Parks tobacco free takes another step forward. Here's this week's district by district coverage. We begin with Chairman John Ease as he speaks to the newest class of leadership Sandy Springs. The at-large commissioner took part in the kickoff fiesta for the group at Heritage Sandy Springs. Sandy Springs is the up-and-coming city in Fulton County. It's the second largest, second only to Atlanta. Very diverse, strong economic base, good public school system, wonderful communities, and it's on the periphery of the city of Atlanta, and it's serving as one of the anchors in our county. And so I wanted to charge these uh, men and women who've gone through the, this tra training over the past several months through Leadership Sandy Springs, a charge that they need to use what, what they've learned for the betterment of others. Just graduated from Leadership Sandy Springs, and it gave me the opportunity to meet people uh, that work and live in this community that I wouldn't otherwise have a chance to. The new 2017 class and new logo were introduced and alumni from years past were also recognized. Leadership Sandy Springs is a 501c3 organization whose mission is to develop, educate, and connect individuals to lead and bring value to their diverse community. District 4 Commissioner Joan Garner is ready to move on making county parks healthier. As the sponsor for the county's All People Are Healthy strategic priority, the commissioner called on Fulton Partners to research the idea of making all county parks tobacco free. During the September regular board meeting, she and her colleagues got an update on the proposal. Enforcement for this type of resolution is typically gained through compliance, and that is why the public education and cessation efforts are very important in this regard, and we would focus a lot of our efforts initially in making sure we were impacting the community through those efforts. Fulton's Department of Parks and Recreation and its Health and Wellness Pitch Program partners developed the Tobacco Smoke-Free Plan. The team hopes to implement the new policy before the end of the year after board approval. And finally, a sneak preview of the renovated South Fulton Library. As a part of the 2008 referendum, voters approved building eight new libraries and expanding and renovating two others. The South Fulton Library is one of the branches with a brand new expanded look and feel thanks to the renovations. You know, Margaret Walker said, teach the words to your children. We're going to teach the words to our children and to the entire community. The South Fulton Library is located at 4055 Flat Shoals Road. The official grand opening will give residents a chance to see the updated branch for themselves. We will bring you more from the grand opening celebrations next week in our district by district coverage. And still to come, the aggressive steps taken to increase services for HIV positive clients. Stay with us. The county's new HIV task force outlines new priorities to reduce stigma and increase services for the county's HIV clients. FGTV's Lynn Vaughn explains. Everyone should be tested for HIV and those who are diagnosed positive should get the best care possible. Those are just some of the goals members of the HIV AIDS task force presented to the Board of Commissioners. When we get them into care, we need to help them stay in care, to access medications, and to get their virus suppressed. As members of the task force work on phase two in the strategy to end HIV in Fulton, they stress how important it is to have policies that will increase prevention. That's where the Board of Commissioners, they say, can continue to help. We're asking you not only to use your formal power to pass certain resolutions, but also to use your convening power to, to work with other agencies and other uh, uh, boards where we know you don't actually have the power to do that yourselves. Health Services Director Dr. Kathleen Toomey works closely with the task force. She says changes are already in the works, including opt-out testing at county health facilities. That's where clients are offered an HIV test along with other services and given the choice to say no or opt out. I'm just grateful to say that we have actually begun the process of going through the recommendations and actually implementing 
many of the recommendations. The new prep center at the Aldridge Health Center helps high-risk residents get a daily pill that is highly effective in preventing HIV. And HIV clients who are pregnant get the treatment they need to prevent passing on the virus to their child. In Fulton County, there's never an excuse for a baby to be born with HIV in 2016. We know how to prevent this. Commissioners hope to take even more steps toward prevention and awareness by December, just two years after the Board of Commissioners established the HIV AIDS Task Force. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Lynn Vaughn. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, this month, health organizations are bringing awareness to the National Substance Abuse Recovery Month. Anise Incorporated is just one county partner which offers substance abuse counseling for residents, including those with HIV. Anise members help clients who are currently struggling with drug use or are recovering from other addictions. The nonprofit provides patients with coping skills to increase sobriety. We have to look at addiction across the board. And that's one of the things that's unique about Anise is that we look at the holistic harm reduction related to addiction, where we're looking at the mind, body, and soul until you get the core of what their addiction is and what their medication, whatever form of addiction that they're using, the addiction will continue to take place. According to a report from the National Survey on Drug Use and Health, in the Atlanta area, 14.8% of people 12 and older used illicit drugs in the past year. 8.3% were classified as having a substance abuse disorder. To learn more about substance abuse counseling at Anise, go to anise.org. Fulton's cooperative extension agents are looking for residents with a green thumb to make them master gardeners. The director of the office says residents will get all the information they need to be master gardeners during a six week training program. Residents will learn how to garden during the different seasons, identify insects, and answer basic questions from the public. Master gardeners are so important to us. We only have a couple of extension agents um, in our north office, and there's one in our South Fulton office. And we cannot reach all of the Fulton County residents. Without our volunteers, we wouldn't be able to do our job. They are actually an extension of the extension agents. So we are very, very happy to have them working with us. I was into house plants. Now I'm into vegetable garden, herb garden, and everything. And I've learned so much more. There's more to growing things other than what you can just see in beauty, but there's beauty also in garden, vegetable gardening. There are about 3,000 master gardeners in Georgia who donate their time to community oriented projects each year. Now you have until the end of the month to register for the six week training program. For more information, just call 404 332 2400. And when Fulton Today returns, parents sign up for a class to help them better communicate with their little bundles of joy. Stay with us. Volunteer coaches and players are wanted for the upcoming basketball season. Registration for the Parks and Recreation Department's basketball program is now underway. The program is for boys and girls ages 5 to 14. Now the teams in the past several seasons have been strong with many going to state tournaments. So this year's teams are expected to score big again. Last year our 8 and under uh, boys won the GRPA championship. They actually went undefeated. They went about 12 and 0. Their coach is returning along with those, those players, so hopefully we can repeat those efforts. The department is also looking for volunteer coaches to help this year. You can register or sign up to volunteer at Burdett Park, Sandtown Park, and Welcome All Park, and Cliftondale Park. Registration ends on November 4th. Call 404-612-PARK. That's 404-612-7275 for more information. And finally, dozens of adorable babies who haven't even started talking yet have now learned how to sign. About 30 parents and their little ones gather weekly at the Alpharetta Library for the Signing Time with Babies class. The children's librarian wanted to create a program for children who are just learning how to communicate. It's it, any age is welcome to it and a lot of ages that aren't that are definitely verbal but might not be, you know, very knowledgeable in the English language. It's a great 
refresher course for them. It's a great introductory course for them. Um, so we're seeing a lot of families who are coming in who, where English is not their first language, which is absolutely great. The class teaches how to sign colors and objects babies will recognize like ball and tree. She kind of teaches you the different signs and she really just kind of tries to connect with the kids and it's really just educational for her. Well, we try to come here as often as we can. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us to meet people because we're new to Alpharetta, to Atlanta. So it's also a great way for her to see other children and socialize and it's a great curriculum that Miss Rebecca provides for us. Parents say it's enjoyable for them as well. To learn more about the signing time with babies, go to AFPLS.org. And before we go, our reminder that we'd like to connect with you online. Check us out anytime on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, our YouTube channel. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. Thank you so much for watching. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County.